Good afternoon. How are we doing? All right. We, I'm doing excellent, excellent. Pumped up. You guys were fantastic for those of you that I interacted with this morning. So uh, first, what I want to do, similar to like when we go to an airport. Anybody here flown before? Airplane? So when you get to the airport and you get to your gate, what do they do? They check your what? Your, your bags, but your boarding pass. Because they want to make sure that you go to the right destination, that you're not walking through the wrong gate. So what I'd like to do is ask you just a couple of questions real quick. How many of you have ever set a goal and then were disappointed when you didn't achieve it? By show of hands. Okay. How many of you have ever set a goal and then prematurely bailed out on that goal, such as a New Year's resolution? Or, or you set a goal to work out three days a week, five days a week, and then all of a sudden you were working out zero days a week, anybody? Yeah. Okay, so judging by the number of hands that have gone up, it looks like everybody, including myself, have experienced this thing of not achieving our goals for whatever reason. And um, if I could get you uh, with the camera there, uh, is it David? Yeah. David, just make sure you do widescreen. Okay, thank you. So, uh, sorry about that. So, we're in the right place. You all, uh, this, this discussion that I have with you all today, it is timely. It's called Developing a Champion's Mindset. And I believe that whatever you set your mind to do, it's possible. So let me tell you a little bit about myself before we get going. I just retired from the Coast Guard after 33 years. And I did 29 years active duty, four years at the Coast Guard Academy. And hold on one second, the screen is not moving. Good now. Okay, thank you. So I did uh, 33 years in the Coast Guard, 29 years active duty, four years at the Coast Guard Academy. I was also a rescue helicopter pilot. I flew uh, 3,300 flight hours, uh, flew 150 search and rescue cases, saved the lives of 20 people, and also assisted the lives of 200 others at sea. Some of my leadership positions outside of flying while I was in the Coast Guard was I was the uh, sensors program manager. Uh, way back in the early 2000s, where I was responsible for procurement of night vision goggles, forward-looking forward -looking infrared radar, as well as research for a number of emerging technologies that we could use in the Coast Guard to aid us in our missions of search and rescue and maritime law enforcement. And I'll tell you today that my background in math and science was critical to me being qualified to be able to conduct myself in that position. So uh, I'll tell you today, continue on with your STEM training. You guys are great and you guys are at the cutting edge and, and just the fact that you are partners with an organization such as EduSir, this is gonna put you heads and tails above a lot of other people. So uh, just keep on studying your, your math, your science, your engineering because great things are going to be happening for you. Now, the reason I told you uh, so many of those items that's on the resume is because a lot of times we have a tendency to compare the worst in ourselves to the best in others. And I want to tell you today that I have sat in the seats that you are sitting in, went through high school and everybody else, all, all the other mentors and volunteers that have worked with you all today, we all had seats in high school. And I want to tell you that my career almost didn't happen. There were many setbacks along the way. And you should expect that there will be things and challenges in your life that will come along the way too. I almost didn't make it into the Coast Guard Academy. The Coast Guard Academy is a four-year service academy just like the Air Force Academy, West Point, and the Naval Academy. And I almost, uh, did, I almost failed out of the Coast Guard Academy. I uh, nearly did not make it through flight school. And I was passed over five times for promotion in the Coast Guard during my career. But I still ended up attaining the rank of captain and being able to stay in. Now, that is uncommon. However, I stuck with it. 
So I just want, I'm just telling you that so you know that when you see me standing up here today or when you see these pictures, you're going to have images of something that's not attainable for yourself, but I'm telling you it is. So there's a few life lessons that I want to go over with you today. And the first one is you can accomplish anything you set your mind to achieve. Now, why do I say that? Remember I told you that I almost didn't get into the Coast Guard Academy, right? Remember? Okay. So this is what happened. I was a junior in high school. I got a postcard in the mail that simply said, can you meet the challenge? And it was from the U.S. Coast Guard. I was intrigued. I've always been somebody that likes a challenge. And I sent off for more information. And, and back then, back in the uh, mid-80s, we were just overjoyed when we got some mail addressed to us. It's not like you guys with text and Twitter and Instagram and all that where you're getting stuff thousands of times a day. We did, that didn't happen when I was growing up. But I, I got it. I was intrigued by the Coast Guard's mission of search and rescue, and that's what I wanted to do. I applied. I didn't get right in because I was having trouble getting the minimum score required on the SAT or the ACT. So what they did was they sent me to a program called the Naval Academy Preparatory School, run by the Navy but shared by the Navy and Marine Corps and the Coast Guard, and uh, it was called NAPS for short. So I attended NAPS, and the deal was if you made it through the NAPS curriculum, you had a guaranteed seat at the Coast Guard Academy or the Naval Academy. So I did the nine months, and I'm getting ready. Uh, I'm about a month before graduation from NAPS, and I still had not passed the SAT or the ACT to get the minimum score required that I needed to get my seat. The Naval Academy approached me and said, We've seen you perform here. You've had a leadership position at the uh, prep school. We want you at the Naval Academy. I politely declined, and I said, my heart is set on the Coast Guard. I know what I really want to do. And they told me, if you pass this by a month later, when you get the results from your test, we won't have a seat left at the Naval Academy should the test not work out for you. I said, I understand, but I know what I want. So a month later, I took the test. I got the uh, score that I needed to get into the Coast Guard Academy, and I continued on. But how many of you know that there would be many individuals that even though they want something bad, they believe in it, would have just bailed out on it? How many people would have bailed out on it and took the other seat? Because what was online, the Service Academy, it's a four, basically it's a four-year, full-ride scholarship. So college education was going to be free. So. When I say you can achieve anything you set your mind to achieve, that's what I'm talking about. So, life lesson number two. When you are no longer afraid to fail, only then are you truly prepared to win. When you are no longer afraid to fail, only then are you truly prepared to win. So, let me go to a uh, flight school example. After about uh, a few months in the program, we go on our first solo flight. So you're going to have maybe 17, 18 hours of flight time at that point in time. And we're going out in solo. We had been practicing aerobatics, loops, aileron rolls, a number of the maneuvers that you would see aircraft do in dogfights. Now, I'm a helicopter pilot, but when we go to Navy Pensacola, all pilots learn how to fly fixed wing first, and then we go into advanced training. So we all come up through the same pipeline and to specialize in whatever aircraft we're gonna fly. So we get out there, I'm going down the runway. It's the first time without having an instructor in the back. And you know, when you're going down the runway for the first time and you can feel every bump in the road, you know, because airplanes really aren't meant to be on the ground. They are meant to be in the air. So as I'm going down the runway for the first time without somebody in the back, I've got all of these thoughts going through my head. Should I pull back on the stick a little bit more and get airborne, or should I stay safe on the ground? But how many of you know that if you want to make it to any destination, you're going to have to leave something behind? My destination was to be a pilot, was to fly, and you can't do both. You're going to have to be uncomfortable, and you're going to have to grow. You're going to have to meet challenges 
they want to grow. Okay? So finally I get airborne and everything smooths out. It's just, you can hear the wind going by, but there's no more bumps. It's nice and smooth. But a week prior to my solo flight, a friend of mine who was a few weeks ahead of me told me about an experience that he had on his solo flight when he went into the loop. The loop maneuver, you, you know, you've been on roller coasters where you just do a loop. So at the top of the loop, he stalled his aircraft, and then he started somersaulting backwards and we do it up at high altitude so that we can recover. But I had that in my mind. And as I pulled into my loop, I'm thinking about what he said. Okay? So I was afraid of what might happen. So I almost get to the top of the loop. And then, and it was an optional maneuver. But then I let off on the stick and I came out of the loop not to go back through. Because what happened was, as you go up, we have a sensor in the aircraft and they're called rudder shakers. And it lets you know of an impending stall. So because I was hesitant, because there was fear at that moment, and you hesitate, just like when you play basketball, when you hesitate, what usually happens to that jump shot? Doesn't go in, you're choked. When you're a quarterback and you hesitate, what happens? Sack, okay? So I hesitated and that started the aircraft to go into the stall because you got to pull back hard on that stick, confident like you mean it, to get through it. But because I was afraid of what may happen on the other end and I had the vision of somersaulting backwards, I was getting, the plane was going to stall before I had enough momentum to get through the loop. So long story short, I chickened out on it the first time on that solo flight, didn't have the security blanket of having the instructor back there and I'll tell you that while I did the maneuver with the instructor in the back, no problem. It was fun. It was just like being at the amusement park. It was great. But the thought of being out there alone and not having somebody else to help get you out of it, because you know when you fly, it is kind of a life-threatening kind of thing. You need to know what you're doing. But the second solo flight that I went on a few weeks later, I did the maneuver. I was no longer afraid. I had a few more times to go through with the instructor. Build that confidence. So that's why I'm saying when you're no longer afraid to fail, only then are you truly prepared to win. Make sense? Okay. Uh, the, the last thing I want to say is lifelong learning, lesson number three, lifelong learning is going to be critical to your success. Now remember I told you that I was passed over five times in the Coast Guard. And before attaining the rank of captain and, and retirement and so forth. What I did there, for over 20 years, I studied leadership, personal development. I was listening to inspirational speeches, listening to lectures, going to conferences. And uh, actually, I used to have a fear of public speaking. I joined Toastmasters. That helped with leadership. And when you get a microphone in your hand, that allows people to see you in a different light. So I would say to you, lifelong learning is going to be critical to your success. Anything you want to do, it's not what you do from 9 to 5, it's what you do from 5 to 9. And I know you guys are in school right now, so I'm going to say it's not what you do from 8 o'clock a.m. to 3 p.m. that's going to set you apart from the other people that you are competing with. It's going to be what you do from 3 p.m. in the afternoon to 8 a.m. in the morning because it's all the extra stuff that you do to prepare yourself for your journey, for your success, that's going to make all the difference in the world. And that's what I had to do. I had to spend many hours working on me. Blaming others only makes you feel good in the moment, but does nothing to help you reach your destiny. I'll say that again. Blaming others only feels good in the moment, but does nothing to help you reach your destiny. Would you agree? All right. So those are my life lessons for you. And I, I want to say that no matter what you feel right now, you can achieve anything that's possible. You just have to believe it. You guys have unlimited potential. Unlimited. I know you know people that have had some disabilities. I know you know people that have had challenges. But whatever you are going through, there is somebody else that has gone through something much worse and attain the goal of whatever it is that you are trying to do. 
So don't blame others. Keep working on yourself. When I was passed over in the Coast Guard, I told myself, the Coast Guard is not a measuring stick of who I am. Only I can determine who I'm going to be. You guys are the writer, the, the writer, director, and the producer of your own real life film. You get to determine what the script will be. You get to determine what it is that you will do for the rest of your life. Okay? So, again, I am very proud of each and every one of you. I am so impressed with the few students that I had a chance to interact with this morning and some people that I've talked to on the side. I've got three children myself at home. They're all out of the house now. But I've got two that are still in school at Hampton University. One is studying mathematics, the other computer science, and my eldest son uh, studied business. But, uh, and they've all had challenges. And they all are achieving, and you can too. So if you don't remember anything else from today, I want you to remember that you can achieve anything possible. You can achieve anything possible. And you can fly higher than you've ever dreamed possible. Good luck with your future endeavors, and God bless. Thank you. Any questions, answers? Maybe I should ask some questions. Now, I'm sure you guys have some questions. Any questions about setbacks, anything? Yes. Okay. Uh, I had a setback. Hello. I had a set. Okay. The question was, what other setbacks happened to me? I'll tell you. From the uh, day I was born, there was a setback. I was born three months premature, and I was born two pounds six ounces. Uh, Priest came in three different times, read last rites, but uh, only God knows what's on the inside. And it, it was 18 months before I took my first steps. I'm walking fine just now. But I'm just saying, what, whatever it is that, that happens, you can get through anything. You've got to start with belief. Uh, when I was going through flight school, I got through flight school, I passed by one one hundredth of a point. And there, there are things that, that happen in flight school, but I, I can tell you this, every one of the rescues that I had, nobody asked me to put them back in the water, uh, send me a pilot that got straight A's, okay? It, it's, it's, how, it's not how fast you learn the information. The only thing that matters is did you learn it, okay? So you don't get through the curriculum. Nobody's just going to hand it to you. Um, and we have uh, evaluations when I fly once a year. So uh, it's not that I didn't know what I was doing, but there was a confidence issue. I got there in flight school, and there was a part of me that couldn't really believe I was there. Uh, I call it a mindset deficit. So I had to start believing that I was a pilot on the inside and not just trying to be one. There was a guy uh, a year ahead of me, and one day, I was uh, going to uh, uh, work, and I said, I was struggling, and I said, man, I am just trying to become a pilot. And he looked at me and he said, anybody that comes to work every day, straps a parachute on their back, gets in an aircraft, takes off, comes back, lands, they're already a pilot. And when he said that, something clicked inside of me. You know, I'm thinking I'm trying to do something, but I'm actually doing it. So that took a little bit of the, uh, you know, the mental games going on inside my head, you know, which gave me more confidence. I was already doing it. You're doing everything, you just have an instructor in the back. So it was a great way to look at it. Anybody else have a question? Did this is unbelievable. I must have did a great presentation where I uh, left you with no question whatsoever. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so the question was, 